Welcome to English language grade 9. Today we will look at the first unit. Everybody is good at something. In this presentation we will cover the following areas. In the people's book we will look at unit 1 from activity 1 to activity 8. We will also look at what collective nouns are and what prepositions are. Then we will look at the workbook from activities 1 to activity 5 and finally we will end with the summary and further reference slides. Please turn to page number 1 of the people's book. The first unit is everybody is good at something and the first activity is acting out. Here we have Malit and Pubudu and they are talking about a TV program I will read the conversation between Malit and Pubudu. I want you to follow it with me. Malit. Hello Pubudu. Did you watch the finals of Children's Can Sing on TV yesterday? Pubudu. Yes, I did. You know, all my family are music lovers, so we watched it all together. Malit. There was quite a large audience at the show, wasn't there? Pubudu. Yes, the hall was full. And what about the boy who came first? He had a great voice. Malit. He sure did. The audience were already clapping their hands when his name was announced. Pubudu. Yes, they must have guessed all along that he was going to be the winner. Malit. What about the orchestra? It was quite big. There were nearly 30 members in it. Pubudu. Yes, the orchestra were all talented. They did a wonderful job. Malit. Yes, you took the words right out of my mouth. I want you to read this conversation between Malit and Pubudu multiple times and underline any difficult words. Once you have underlined these words, I want you to take out a dictionary and find the meaning of these words so that the conversation between Malit and Pubudu is clearer. Do this before you move on to activity number two. Activity number two is regarding the conversation between Malit and Pubudu. So here we have six questions. The first five are pretty straightforward but I have answered one question from there and the sixth question I have answered one from that as well so that you will have a better understanding so the first question is what is the TV program mentioned in the dialogue it is pretty straightforward you can turn to page number one and it is right on top it is uh, the children can sing okay so that's the name of the TV program. Malit says it at the start of the conversation. And if you look at question number six, it says find words in the conversation which mean much the same as the following. So there are three questions over here. I have answered the first one so that you have a better understanding on how to find the words that match question number two and three okay so the first one is said officially or in public so if you go through the conversation between Malit and Pubudu you will notice that the word announced is given at some point in their conversation so announced means to say something and that could be either officially or in public okay so there is the most suitable word uh, that we can take from this conversation to answer this question. Likewise, I want you to attempt all the remaining questions in activity number two. Now let's look at the learning point in page number three. So here we are going to learn about collective nouns, right? So I'm going to read what's given on the pupils book. I want you to follow it with me. Okay. When we use a collective noun, we can use either a singular or a plural verb. Okay, I'm sure everyone knows what nouns 
and verbs are right so here we are talking about a collective noun we'll come to that i'll explain what it is and uh, what we are saying is that we can either use a singular or a plural verb with this collective noun right so the choice depends on whether we see the group as a whole or as a number of individual members right so this is important because collective nouns they represent it is a word used to represent a group of people animal or things right so so I have given an infographic on the slide as well so we have collective nouns for people you can say for example if there if there are some people who are robbers okay you can call them a gang of thieves right for animals you can say a murder of crows okay if there are uh, a lot of crows you can say a murder of crows right for things now here we can see a bunch of ships right so if it's a bunch of ships we can say a fleet of ships right so all these are collective nouns and they refer to um, multiple things right but these are multiple things of the same type so that point is important as well so we use a singular verb if the group acts as a single unit so if the entire group in the collective noun if that entire bunch of units act as a single unit we use a singular verb right and a plural verb when the members of the group act as a number of individuals so there's an example here so you will get a better understanding uh, of what this means uh, please look at page number three and examples so the first one is there was quite a large audience okay so audience is a collective noun and here the audience is seen as one unit okay audience is the people who are there who are looking at a show let's say or a play okay the people who are sitting down and looking at the show so here when you say there was quite a large audience okay you're referring to everyone sitting down as a single unit okay it is seen as a single unit in the second example it says the audience were already clapping their hands here the audience is seen as a group of people acting individually okay so there's a small difference in the way you use this collective noun right so when you say the audience were already clapping their hands we are referring to every single person was clapping their hands right so then we use the verb were or the plural verb okay unlike the previous example where we use the singular verb okay so i hope that's clear right now let's look at some examples for collective nouns if you look at page number three in the people's book you will see that there is a common list of collective nouns that are given so i'll read out the list it's army audience board band committee crew family jury orchestra public staff and team right so familiarize yourself with these collective nouns and i have given some additional collective nouns on the slide okay and some sentences as well so the first example is our class took a field trip to the natural history museum so here class is a collective noun okay the second one is this year's basketball team includes three players who are over six feet tall 
so when we are usually talking about a game like basketball or volleyball right we usually use the collective noun team right the next example is napoleon's army was finally defeated at waterloo so i'm sure everyone has heard about napoleon hopefully so regardless of that so if you want to refer to a group of soldiers that are going to war let's say so we can call them an army right so army is the collective noun here so we have some additional collective nouns which are commonly used such as herd for a group of herbivore animals right so herbivore animals are animals that eat only plants right next we have pack so we can we use this collective noun to show a group of canine animals such as wolves or dogs also used to describe playing cards and packages containing multiple objects so this particular collective noun has two uses or two different scenarios where it can be used we can say a pack of dogs or a pack of wolves okay we are referring to canine animals right or we can uh, refer to a lot of cards or packages or uh, containing multiple objects basically right so we can call that a pack as well next we have flock which is a collective noun used to mention a group of birds and it is also used to discuss small hooved animals such as sheep or goats right small hooved means their legs have small hooves right if you don't know this word please use a dictionary right next we have swarm a group of insects and finally we have shoal a group of fish right so these are some common collective nouns now let's look at activity number 3 in page number 3 here i have answered the first question only just to help you in order to answer the remaining questions so there are five words given in the box and you have to use the words where they are appropriate in the sentences right so the first one is a cricket blank consists of 11 players so like i said before if it's a game usually like basketball volleyball cricket right we usually use the term team okay because there are multiple people taking part in order to play this game right so we use the word team so that is what we have used a cricket team consists of 11 players right so use the remaining words in the correct places in order to complete the activity so if you can turn to page number four we can see activity number four right over there uh, you have to fill in the blanks with the correct verb so in front of each sentence there are two verbs that are given which are either singular or plural so you have to use the one that best fits the sentence right the first one is done for you so the first one is the family blank is or are smaller than ours so here when you read the sentence you notice that the collective noun family is taken as a whole okay not individual units because we are saying their family right so since it's not considered on like we are not breaking down it into individual units or we are not referring to individual units of the family or people of the family right we use the singular verb right which is is so if you read out the sentence you would read it as their family is smaller than ours okay so likewise read the sentence and see which verb 
is the best match for that particular sentence right and uh, you can complete activity number four activity number five in page number four is a reading exercise so there is a text given about abilities and talents i want you to read this um, entire text on your own and underline any difficult words and find the meanings from a dictionary before you read it on your own i will read it once so that you can follow it with me make sure that you pay attention to the words that are in bold okay this will be important later on in the um, activities abilities and talents different people have different abilities and talents for example among us there are people who are artistically inclined they may have a host of talents such as music dancing or painting to name a few but there are those who have a natural ability for technical activities such as working with electronic gadgets many of us are usually fortunate enough to find out early in life what we are really good at and make a success of it however as implied by the popular saying you do not know what you can do till you try some people fail to discover their true potential a child for example may just sit somewhere with a box of crayons beside him but he will never be able to find out if he has the makings of an artist until he starts working with crayons what really lies beneath someone's success in any field is dedication and hard work james watt or the wright brothers for example did not make their inventions overnight they were driven by true interest in what they were trying to achieve so we should all aim at deriving the maximum benefit and satisfaction from our abilities and talents so like i mentioned before please read through this again and pay attention to the words that are in bold and i have answered the first question and the fifth uh, first part of that question in order to make uh, answering the questions here a bit simpler right so the first question is name two things that artistically inclined people are good at so the two things are given actually more than two things are given in the first paragraph music dancing or painting right so you can either write music and dancing or dancing and painting right so i want you to attempt the other questions but let's look at question number five the first part question number five says find words from the text which mean much the same as the following so here there are four questions so the first one is done for you by the side of so you have to find a word from this text that mean the same thing okay it has to mean pretty much the same thing in the text so if you look at the second paragraph um the sentence where it says a child for example may just sit somewhere with a box of crayons beside him right so the box of crayons is by the side of the child right that is what is said by saying beside him so here the word beside can be used in order to answer this question so likewise you have to find similar words that mean the same thing for find for the first time and the word lucky and highest you have to find similar words from the text right now let's look at what a preposition is okay so in page number 5 there's a learning point that says prepositions uh so i have given the meaning in the slide as well so a preposition is a word usually a short word that sits before a noun pronoun or a word that is ending in the ing form right in order to link the words okay so the 
description given on the pupil's book is prepositions link words they are used before nouns pronouns and the ing form of verbs to show place position time direction purpose etc right so prepositions help us uh, to show multiple things right so if you just look at what this word even means about the word preposition the word preposition means positioned before okay so a preposition sits before a word something okay some word so either a noun or pronoun or a verb that is ending in ing okay to show that words relationship to another word nearby okay so that's the whole purpose of prepositions it helps us to link one side of the sentence to the other side of the sentence so you will notice this when you are going forward right in this slide there's an infographic to help you understand how prepositions help to link one side of the sentence to the other side of the sentence right so we have a few words on the left hand side and on the right hand side and in order for these words to make sense we need a preposition in the middle in order to link these words okay so a preposition sits before a noun to link the noun to nearby words right so we have the noun on the right hand side and we have a few words on the left hand side right so the first example is the apple the plate okay so if i don't use the preposition on there is no way to link the apple and the plate okay we can see that there is a apple that is on the plate right so we are talking about a position so the preposition on is absolutely necessary in this a uh, sentence or example in order to link the left side of the sentence to the right hand side right so the next one is the noises and night so this is not a complete sentence so we have part of the sentence we have a few words on the left hand side and then we have a preposition and then we have night so in order to connect the noises to the night right we use the preposition to link it the noises at night so we are talking about a time here okay so here the preposition is used to uh, show time at night right so this is how prepositions help us to link words now let's look at some examples with uh prepositions in sentences right so if you look at pu the people's book in page number 5 there are three examples um so before we come to the slide we'll look at that the first example is fish live and water okay so fish live where in water so you're talking about um like a place right so where do fish live in water so we use the preposition in and here water is a noun right so the preposition is coming before the noun the second example is my best friend is suresh i often borrow story books from him so we have him which is a pronoun and we have the preposition from in front of um or rather right before the pronoun okay to show from whom if you just say i often borrow story books him that does not make any sense you have to say from him right the third example is my brother is good at solving crossword puzzles so here solving is an ing form of the verb right so we have the preposition at uh, in order to 
makes sense right my brother is good solving crossword puzzles would not make sense so in order for this sentence to make sense you have to use this preposition my brother is good at solving crossword puzzles okay so i have given um, five different uh, sentences on the slide if you can uh, read those right so the first one is the book about the wizard now here you notice something the left hand side of the sentence and the right hand side of the sentence is the same the only thing that are, that is changing in these five sentences is the preposition right but as soon as you change the preposition the meaning of the entire sentence changes the first one is the book about the wizard that means the book whatever the book that is is about some wizard okay so it's explaining about the wizard the second one or rather the second example the book by the wizard so when you say the book by the wizard we have a wizard somewhere a person and there is i'm referring to a book that is by him or beside him right or her okay so the book by the wizard we are talking about a location right where the book is the third example the book near the wizard so there can be a wizard somewhere in the room okay i am referring to some book that is near the wizard okay it's it's not far away from him it's near the wizard okay the next example the book behind the wizard so when i use the preposition behind i'm talking about the book which is behind the uh, wizard not in front not on the side not far away it is behind the wizard okay some book so the last example is the book under the wizard so the wizard might be accidentally standing on a book right or sitting maybe so i can say the book under the wizard to refer to the book that the wizard is sitting on or standing on right so here you can clearly see that when you change the preposition the whole meaning changes and hence it is very important to learn how to use prepositions correctly right look at this slide now and read all the prepositions that are given here okay it is very important to take this uh, content down or rather write them down in your writing copy so that you uh, become better familiarized with these words okay so these prepositions are very commonly used and they help you explain a lot of situations or locations or time place right directions so in order to construct the sentences in a meaningful manner you need these prepositions so please write them down in your writing copies in order to better understand the use of these prepositions you can write one sentence for each preposition that is given here okay so that you know how to use these prepositions so take the first one above and then write a sentence where you use the preposition above right likewise do do the same thing for all the 39 prepositions that are given in this table now let's look at activity number 6 on page number 6 of the people's book so the sixth activity is regarding the prepositions that we just learned right so you have to study those prepositions that are highlighted in the text and abilities and talents okay i told you to pay attention while i was reading the text so all those are prepositions right in page number 4 and 5 in the text you can see all the highlighted words and they are prepositions okay so among them we have among for of beside beneath from right so now you have to complete the following sentences that are given in activity 
using the prepositions that are given. So the first one is done for you so that you have an understanding on how to complete this activity. You have to attempt the other questions. The first one is the little girl was sitting blank her mother. So of the prepositions that are given the most suitable would be beside her mother. It can't be among her mother, for her mother, of her mother, from her mother, beneath her mother, right? It won't make sense. So the only word or rather the only preposition that makes sense is beside, by the side of her mother, right? Likewise, read the sentence and see if the preposition makes sense in the sentence and only then should you use it. Now let's look at activity number 7 on the same page. It's a writing exercise. Here it says, Supun, a grade 9 student, wants to write a paragraph about his best friend for the class wall newspaper. Imagine you are Supun and write the paragraph using the following details. So, uh, you have to write a paragraph about uh, the best friend for the class wall newspaper. So we have Ranuka and he is good at English, reads a lot, fond of learning new words, loves solving crossword puzzles, writes stories and simple poems in English, can sing English songs, president of the Junior English Literary Association, helps me with my English, always encourages me to speak in English. So all these points are available for you in order for you to uh, write about Ranuka, right? So you can start uh, like my best friend Ranuka is let's say good at English and he okay likewise you can expand on what is given here and write about Ranuka. So that is the writing exercise uh, or rather the activity 7 and you should complete it. Now let's look at activity 8 on page number 7. Here it's a speaking exercise, right? You have to describe what you see in the picture. So there's a box that is given on top of page number 7 and it has some words that are given, right? So, along with some prepositions. So you can begin by saying this is a scene from a school concert and you can see what right so you have to describe what you see and you have to use the words that are given in the green color box okay and construct sentences so although it's a speaking exercise uh, you are expected to write sentences using the words that are given and describe what you see in the picture and write it down in your writing copy right so when you are asked to talk about it you can refer and then tell, tell the teacher or sir what is happening in the picture now let's move on to the workbook in the workbook unit one everybody is good at something has all the activities that are necessary in order to further develop your understanding of the unit that we just covered in the people's book, right? So activity one is again prepositions. There are a few questions over there and the first one is done for you. It says fill in the blanks with the correct prepositions used from, of, for, to, among, beside, beneath and construct the sentences, right? So the first one is we had lunch at a restaurant blank the river. So if you put beneath the river, it doesn't make sense. Among the river, we don't usually say among the river. We had lunch at a restaurant among the river. It does not make sense. From the river, right? It does not make sense. So the best fit or the best preposition that fits in this sentence is beside the river. Okay. So likewise, complete that activity. In activity number two, it says match the words in column A with their meanings in column B. So this is regarding collective nouns. In column A we have crowd, class, committee, staff and crew. So you have to match 
these collective nouns with the descriptions that are given in column B, a group of students who are taught together. So that first description would be what? Okay, what is the best uh, matching collective noun that it describes it, right? So match A to B. Okay. Now let's look at activity number three, page number two. Complete the sentences with the words given in the box. So we have in the box we have crowd, team, family, crew, and orchestra. Again, this is this activity is regarding collective nouns. So the first um, the first question is done for you to help you with the remaining questions. So the first one is how many players are there in a volleyball? What? Should it be volleyball crowd, volleyball family, volleyball crew, volleyball orchestra? It doesn't make sense, right? So the best matching, the best fit word is team. That is the best uh, collective noun that we can use that, is, that describes volleyball, right? Volleyball team. We don't have volleyball family. We do. Not that we don't, but usually it's volleyball team or volleyball, um, yeah, it's volleyball team, okay? So, likewise, fill in the blanks for the remaining questions. Now turn to page 3 of the workbook. The first one is activity number 4. Here we will look at prepositions, okay? So, there's a passage that is given. And you have to underline the correct preposition that best fits that particular sentence. So you have to read very carefully. Okay, don't rush. Take your time. Read very carefully and see which preposition matches. So in each sentence, there are three possible answers. So you have to underline the most appropriate. So read carefully and underline the correct answer. Right? In activity number five, it says, imagine you have a friend who is very good at music. He or she is a good singer and has won many, many singing competitions. He or she can play several musical instruments as well. He or she also tries to write songs and compose music. His or her ambition is to become a top musician one day. Add your own ideas and write a short composition about your friend right so here what i want you to do is take down some notes or write a few points uh, regarding what you're going to write okay so and write a short passage okay just write a small pa uh, passage talking about your friend and how good he or she is and about his or her future ambitions right so take your time on this exercise and write a small passage a passage is sufficient over here right so as long as you include all the information that is asked from the question so as a summary we went through acting as in reading the conversation between malit and pubudu and answering the questions in activity number two then we understood what collective nouns are and how they are used and how the verb changes between singular and plural depending on how the collective noun is used in the sentence right next we read through a text which had many prepositions okay so we understood what prepositions are and why they are so useful uh, in sentences and um, I also gave you uh, a few commonly used prepositions so that you can better construct your sentences right next uh, we did a few exercises on them and uh, afterwards we did a writing exercise where we wrote a small passage for the newspaper of the school newspaper uh, regarding Ranuka and why he is such a good person and what he is good at 
and how he helps you right and then finally we did the speaking exercise in the people people's book i told you to write down the sentences that you would like to speak about so you have to analyze the picture that is given in page number 7 and use the um the words that are given on the top of the page and construct your sentences right next we went to the workbook and there as well we completed um questions on prepositions and collective nouns right and finally uh, you were asked to write a short composition about a friend who is very good at music okay so that concludes everything that we covered for the unit 1 of the people's book and the workbook in order to further understand collective nouns and prepositions i highly recommend you typing collective nouns examples you can type these keywords in google and then you can get so many collective nouns that are being used and you can say collective nouns sentences and you will see how these collective nouns are used in sentences right there are hundreds of collective nouns and prepositions so you can go through the internet and type these keywords and learn more about collective nouns and prepositions please make sure that you do all the activities that are mentioned in this presentation thank you for listening please stay safe